Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to learn the complete set of Spring and Spring Boot annotations that every backend developer must understand. We will go category by category following the roadmap exactly. And for each annotation, I'll explain what it does in two or three simple lines so you can understand it instantly. Let's get started. We begin with the core stereotypes. The component annotation marks a class as a Spring Manage Bean so Spring can create and manage its object automatically. Service is used for business logic layers and tells Spring that this class performs service operations. Repository is used for data access classes and also enables automatic exception translation. Controller marks a class as a Spring MVC controller that handles web request. REST controller does the same but automatically adds response body so everything returns JSON by default. Now let's move to dependency injection annotations. Autowired lets Spring automatically inject required beans into your class. Qualifier helps resolve conflicts when multiple beans of the same type exist by specifying which bean to inject. Value injects values from properties, environment variables, or hard coded strings into fields or methods. Inject is a Jakarta standard alternative to Autowired used for constructor or field injection. Resource is another annotation for injection that matches beans by name first and then by type. Next we have configuration related annotations. Configuration marks a class as a source of Spring Bean definitions. Bean tells Spring to create an object returned by the annotated method and register it as a bean. Primary marks one bean as the default when multiple candidates exist. Lazy delays bean creation until it's actually needed, improving startup time depends on ensures one bean loads only after another bean is initialized scope defines bean lifecycle such as singleton or prototype profile activates beans only for specific environments like dev test or prod property source loads external property files into the spring environment import allows importing additional configuration classes now let's talk about the core spring boot annotations spring boot application combines configuration component scanning and auto configuration into one annotation. Enable auto configuration tells Spring Boot to automatically configure components based on class path dependencies. Spring Boot configuration is a specialized version of configuration tailored for boot applications. Components can tell Spring where to search for components and beans. Enable configuration properties enables binding external configuration into Java classes. Configuration properties maps entire groups of properties to a typed class. Configuration properties are scanned, automatically scans and registers classes annotated with configuration properties. Now let's look at mapping annotations that handle HTTP requests. Request mapping defines a URL path and RTP method at class or method level. Get mapping handles HTTP get request for fetching data. Post mapping handles post request for creating data. Put mapping handles put request used for updates. Delete mapping handles delete request for removing resources. Patch mapping handles partial updates to an existing resource. Next are annotations that help extract data from incoming requests. Request param reads values from query parameters. Path variable extracts values from dynamic URL segments. Request body maps the HTTP request body into a Java object. Request header extracts values from HTTP headers. Cookie value reads values from cookies. Request part handles multi-part requests like file uploads. Model attribute binds request parameters to a model object and is also used to prepare model data. Now we move to response related annotations. A response body tells Spring to write the method return value directly to the HTTP response, usually as JSON. Response status lets you set the HTTP status code returned from a controller method. Cross origin enables CORS access for front end applications running on different domains. Let's talk about error handling. Exception handler catches specific exceptions and returns custom responses. Controller advice applies exception handlers globally across all controllers. REST controller advice is similar but automatically returns JSON responses. Next, we have annotations that control bin lifecycle in web applications. Request scope creates a new bean for every HTTP request. Session scope creates one bean per user session. Application scope creates a bean for the lifetime of the entire application. 
session attributes stores model attributes in an http session for reuse across request transaction handling is crucial transactional marks a method or class to run within a database transaction it handles rollback automatically when exceptions occur enable transaction management activates annotation driven transaction handling in the application now let's explore asynchronous and scheduled operations enable scheduling activate support for scheduled tasks scheduled runs methods at fixed intervals or cron expressions enable async allows asynchronous execution of methods async runs a method in a separate thread so long running task don't block the main flow catching improves performance dramatically enable catching turns on catching support in spring cacheable stores method results in a cache to avoid running expensive logic repeatedly cache put updates the caches with new values even when the method is executed cache evict removes entries from a cache when needed caching lets you combine multiple caching rules on a single method cache config sets common cache settings at class level next we move into security annotations Enable web security turns on Spring Security's web support. Enable method security lets you secure methods using annotations. Pre-authorized checks permissions before a method is executed. Post-authorize checks permissions after method execution. Secure restricts access based on user roles. Roles allowed does the same but uses a standard Java security annotation. Authentication principal injects the currently authenticated user into controller methods. Now let's look at actuator annotations. Endpoint defines a custom actuator endpoint. Read operation exposes read-only operations for monitoring. Write operation allows updates through actuator endpoints. Delete operation exposes delete style operations for actuator. Finally, let's review testing annotations. Spring Boot test loads the full application context for integration test. Web MVC test tests only the web layer such as controllers. Data JPA test test JPA repositories with an in-memory database. REST client test test REST clients in isolation. JSON test test JSON serialization and deserialization. Auto configure mock MVC sets up mock MVC for controller testing. Auto configure test database configures in-memory databases for tests. Mockito bean creates a Mockito mock inside the Spring context. Spy bean wraps an existing Spring bean with a Mockito spy. And that completes all the major Spring and Spring Boot annotations you need to master as a backend developer. Understanding these annotations will help you build cleaner, faster and more scalable applications while also improving your debugging and architectural skills. If you want to learn the commonly used Spring and Spring Boot annotations with coding examples, then I have a free 3 hours course on this channel. This course is popular, you can see the views and likes. I will provide the link of this course in the video description and comment section below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.